Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here and being a part of worship today. We appreciate your presence, and it's ex an exciting day. We have, I think, 15 who will be affirming their baptisms today, and that's fairly painless, uh, so we're not going to make you memorize and say things in public and all that kind of stuff, but it's going to be a good day, so we're excited about that. Just a few announcements we want to make before we continue with worship. Uh, you should have a bulletin insert. If not, you can find one. It's called Update. This really serves as our weekly newsletter here at Roseville Lutheran. So we ask that you take these home with you uh, after worship today so you know what's going on uh, in the week ahead. Just uh, a couple of announcements we want to highlight out of the update. First of all, don't forget that this entire month, uh, the three congregational surveys that are a part of the ministry site profile which is a document that uh, we fill out and then the Synod uses to find uh, potential candidates for the next senior pastor position here. Uh, that document has three surveys that the congregation is asked to fill out. Those surveys are available whole month of May. Uh, they're in paper form uh, at the Welcome Center in the Commons. They're also found online on our uh, website as well. I just want to remind you, please take time to fill out those surveys and get those in by the end of the month so we can continue to move forward in completing the ministry site profile here at Roseville Lutheran. Also, if you open up the inside of uh, the bulletin, you'll see that we've got Vacation Bible School uh, coming up uh, in the month of June, June 24 through 28. The more important date is at the end of that announcement. The deadline uh, this year for registering for that VBS is June 3rd, June 3rd. We have to really honor that, so make sure that you get uh, your children registered for VBS by June 3rd. Also, Blessing of the Bicycles will be June 9th at both our worship services. I haven't done this, but we bring bikes in. Uh, no motorcycles, right? No Harleys, just Schwinns. But uh, we bring bikes in and helmets for a Blessing of the Bicycles because, as you know, once school is out, I don't know how your neighborhood is, but there are bikes everywhere, and they're shooting across the street and down the sidewalk and everything. So we want to make sure we have a Blessing of the Bicycles. That'll be June 9th. Also, don't forget next Sunday, if you look at the back of the update, we start our summer series on uh, Everyday Contemplative. And there's books available for that. We'll be focusing on a book this summer. It's a, a very easy summer read. If you want to pick up one of those books, again, it's on uh, the Welcome Center countertop. You can pick one of those up after worship today. That is it. Now we need children to come forward and sing. All right? I'm not going to sing with you. I'm going to go sit down.
All right, my friends up here, you can take a seat for story time, and any other kids who would like to come and join for story time are welcome to come on up. today. Let's give another hand for the kids choir this morning. Yeah. All right, friends. So as it's starting to get kind of warm outside and maybe who has played outside lately? Because it's so nice out. Has anybody out here gone outside lately? I know I have. Yeah. What's some things you've done outside lately? Maybe to, maybe to cool down. What, what's something you've done? Oh, biked. Yeah. Are you going to bring, you should bring your bike to Blessing of the Bicycles then. Yeah, Tim. You were reading? Did you read outside? Nice. Jumped on the trampoline. Yeah, Phoenix. You played on the playground. Wow, that's so cool. Have any of you gotten really warm while you're outside? It's a little hot, isn't it? What have you done to cool yourself down maybe while you're outside? Yeah, Lucy. Oh, you used a fan? That's a perfect idea. Very cool. Phoenix, I heard you say you were drinking water. Yeah, drinking water is a great answer. What else? You just sat in the shade. That's a pretty good idea. Yes, yeah, okay. Go in the playhouse? Sure. Uh, eat a popsicle. Eat a popsicle without telling your mom is what he said. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you don't want to. Okay. Yeah, so there's lots of things we can do to cool ourselves down. Summer is happening, but Lucy already said one, and it's, we, can, we can maybe just fan ourselves like this, right? Can you all do that, like with just your hand maybe? Yeah, you feel a little breeze, don't you? Yeah. How do, how do you know that the, that, the wind, that the air is moving? Can you see the air? No. How do you know? You can feel it? What else? Yeah, Lucy. It feels colder, sure. What's happening to my hair? It's moving, isn't it? Yeah. So then you can kind of tell that the air is moving again, right? Yeah. So in our story today, you're probably thinking, what, what in the world does, does a breeze or fanning yourself have to do with the Bible? Well, in our story today, in our story today, we have the Holy Spirit comes in and has like big rushing wind in our story today just like this can you all fan yourselves again yeah just like that and jesus disciples feel this rush of wind come in and they know that the holy spirit has come and it's a day called pentecost can you all say that with me pentecost yeah that's the day we're celebrating today along with our confirmands right here which is super duper cool so before we head on off to rlc kids one if you're in the kids choir I need you to stay right where you are because Joe is going to come up and we're going to sing another song and then you're going to come to RLC Kids with Joe. And then everybody else is going to come to RLC Kids with me this morning. And it's our last day of RLC Kids until September, friends. Oh. But we're going to have a fun little party today. I have some surprises for you and we're going to have a great time together. Yay is right, Riley. So let, before we go, friends, let's do our prayer together. So repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the Holy Spirit and for our time together in community today. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, if you are in RLC Kids, you can walk on up to the Activity Center. If you're in choir, stay here. 
and excitement. <laughs> All right, let's rise, call ourselves to worship. We come to worship in the name of God who creates. We come together through Christ who saves. We are joined in community by the Spirit who calls us. We are named, noticed, and known in this space and in this place with a grace that lasts forever. Amen. Spirit of fire, your holy presence burns bright with this world. Spread, spread your spirit throughout our communities so that our hearts may burn with love and hope. Amen. You may be seated. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Like Max said, today is the day of Pentecost. Thanks for reading. You did great, by the way. And when we talked about last year in confirmation, we we studied the Bible, and we talked about Acts and this reading, and when I said Pentecost, I think it was one of you that said, Penta what? Pentecost. Pentecost now is a pretty big day in the church, and some will treat it like it's almost a birthday, or it can be a birthday. In fact, there was someone before the first worship service that came up to Pastor Marty and said, happy birthday! And Pastor Marty was like, what? Pentecost. So in fact, we could all take in that Pentecost message of what's perceived as the start of the Christian community and of the church as we know it today. And we could maybe sing a little happy birthday message, like, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Christian community united in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, beloved by God and descended upon by the Holy Spirit. Happy birthday to you. I think that might be too lengthy for all of us to sing together this morning. And much like a birthday, though, we have a lot of reasons to celebrate today, especially when we have 15 ninth graders affirming their baptism. But Pentecost is not just a birthday. It is not just a celebration. Pentecost is also a day that can be very overwhelming and full of confusion and full of things that we truly do not or cannot or will not ever fully understand. In our Pentecost reading for this morning in Acts, you have this scene where all of these folks are gathered together and all of a sudden there was a rush or a sound a violent wind, a forceful wind. Growing up on the prairie, I have experienced violent wind, the kind where when you face it head on and stand still, it pushes you back just a bit, the kind where it hits your face and will leave red marks if you're out in it for too long, the kind where you can scream and no one will hear you because the wind is too loud. And I think of and pray for the places recently impacted by violent, forceful wind. The places impacted by severe storms and tornadoes where this violent wind has destroyed homes and lives. Violent wind is absolutely terrifying. But in our reading for this morning, this forceful wind, rather than destroying the room, the house, or the town, it instead had tongues of fire appear out of it and rest on each person there. And all were filled with the Holy Spirit and all began speaking in other languages. And what is not mentioned here in our reading for this morning is that even though they spoke all of these different languages, they could still understand each other. What a terrifying, confusing, and overwhelming experience. And it does not at all sound like a birthday party. And some folks attributed it right away to them being able to all talk in another language and understand each other to the power of God. 
And others said that it's because these individuals were drunk. I kid you not, it's in the Bible. It said that they had tasted the new wine. And I think how often do we experience God's strange ways of working in the world as confusing, overwhelming, or even negative. That many times we do not understand what's really happening until later or we'll just dismiss it completely and attribute it to something else. I have these experiences all the time at airports. It may sound really strange, but often if I'm flying by myself, I'll be sitting alone at my gate waiting for my flight and I'll have someone come and sit right next to me. They will often strike up a conversation with me and tell me about their life, their struggles, their hardships, their deepest regrets, the things also that give them the greatest joy. And I kid you not, this has happened to me so many times over the years and at least once every single time that I fly. And I never tell them what I do for a living. That is the one thing I do not mention. And after one conversation, there was a man. He was so relieved as to what he had just shared with me that he turned to me and said, I'm not really sure what just happened here. I've never talked to anyone like this before, but I felt God telling me that I needed to talk to you. And for me, this was a really, really strange experience. It made me question whether or not God really told him to come talk to me, but it also made me wonder, why is it always me when I'm trying to get from point A to point B? And maybe you too have had this encounter, maybe at an airport or somewhere else, or just any sort of encounter that makes you wonder, what is God up to? Is God really here in this moment with me? And this is probably one of the biggest theological questions of our time. What is God doing? And it can even extend beyond just what is God doing in my life? But what is God doing in this place, this space, this moment in time? What is God doing in this church, in this community, in the lives, in this congregation, but also those beyond it. What is God up to and how do we know if God's spirit is behind it and how do we even know that something, that something like Pentecost is spirit-led? Over the last few weeks here at Roseville Lutheran Church, we have been talking about Paul. Paul was an apostle and a writer. He wrote most of the letters in the New Testament, including the first Corinthians chapter and book that we have been talking about over the last couple of weeks. And Paul has a few criteria for us to help us figure out how something can be spirit-led. The first is that for something to be led by the spirit, is to listen for its claims about Jesus Christ. The Spirit makes Jesus known to us in the cross, in the supper that we'll participate in here in a minute, and in the resurrection. And by the Spirit, the church and we as witnesses testify that Jesus, not money, not security, not self-esteem, not paranoia, not power, not self-interests, nor anything else is Lord. And when we put that stuff, that money, security, our own self-interests and power, above anything else, we are not following or listening to the Spirit. We are listening only to ourselves. That's the first criteria. The second one is figuring out that the Spirit's interests are in the good of the whole. Meaning the Spirit is all about building up the group rather than enriching ourselves as individuals. And it ties into that first point, right? 
when we only use our gifts or resources for the betterment of ourselves and only our own life or our own passions or interests, we are not considering the needs of our neighbors and our community. We are only looking out for what we as an individual want and not what our community actually needs. One of the ways to combat this, to work against this and work toward building up the group and following that spirit is recognizing the gifts that each of you in here have. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12 about these gifts, and he says that now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. These gifts we all receive from God's Spirit. We all receive this ability just as they did at Pentecost. And it is for us to proclaim Jesus as Lord and use these gifts to serve the common good. It is these differences that are so important for us, these each unique and individual gifts that make community. And it is knowing that these different gifts do not divide or break us because we are all united together in Christ Jesus. And finally, the third criteria that Paul offers to us as we try to answer what God is up to in a particular place and time I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not going to be a clean-cut answer. When we look for the Spirit's gifts, we need to also look for a bit of a mess. Not everything is going to be packaged up perfectly and come to us in the ways that we expect. We often think we do not have gifts because we are not like so-and-so who does great and amazing things in the world. We often think we need to speak in tongues or have these certain things happen to us to know the Spirit is at work. The Corinthians were in that place. That's why Paul wrote to them. They looked to the extreme of extremes in the most dramatic of situations to know that the Spirit was at work in them, to know that they are chosen, that they are the best, and they are above everyone else in the hierarchy. But the Corinthians forgot about the quieter works of the Spirit. Uh, the works of the Spirit that were trying to draw them into community and into a community that respects all of its members. That valuing one another is more important than their knowledge, their wisdom, their power, prophecy, miracles, tongues, and all of the other gifts. Paul's goal is not to have this tidy, bundled-up community of rules and expectations and hierarchy, but instead one that is based around loving one another. So how do we know something is spirit-led? By first, listening to its claims about Jesus Christ. Second, by using the gifts that we have, not for just ourselves, but for the good of the whole. And third, that the things are not often what we expect, but just where the Spirit might be at work. Often when we look for that Spirit at work in our own lives, we too act like the Corinthians, and we expect to find it in places like where the Holy Spirit descends on us with flames of tongues, where rivers part or where bushes burn, this really big faith moment, when in reality it can look like someone just talking to you at an airport, you performing on a stage and using your gifts to bring joy to people, playing on your soccer team and reaching out a hand to someone who is knocked down on the opposing team. Maybe it's the time you take away from everything else and have a chance to notice God. Whatever it is for you, the Spirit is at work. And I know because I have seen the Spirit at work in our ninth grade students. I have heard you all talk about the Spirit in your faith conversations and have seen and read it in your faith projects. 
you know God's presence in your life and rely and you listen to its claims about Jesus Christ and you trust in the work of the Holy Spirit. So ninth graders, as you affirm your baptism today on Pentecost, this day for and of celebration, I hope our Acts reading reminds each and every one of you that your gifts makes you, you. That the Spirit has given you these abilities. That you are loved by God just as you are. That you strive to use your gifts not just for yourselves and your own gains, but for others. That you hold Jesus Christ who died and was resurrected for you at the center of your life and of your Christian faith and that you look to the Holy Spirit at work in your own life. It will not always be easy or tidy. You will not always have all the answers. There will be many, many doubts and questions. It will sometimes actually be really annoying and probably really frustrating. It might not be that big grand gesture we often hope to find, but the Spirit is there guiding each of you forward and toward the one whose first and forever name for you was beloved. Amen. Please stand as we sing our song of the day and get ready for that as we pray. Good and gracious God, we know your spirit is at work in us today on this holy day of Pentecost. You fill each and every one of us with your gifts and abilities for us to use in our own lives this day and each day forward. Remind us of the things that make us us and use them toward the betterment of our neighbors as we strive toward that community that you have defined so clearly. Your kingdom come on heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. And may we this and everything else that remains on our hearts be uplifted to you this day. Amen.
You may be seated. We have come now to the time of our offering, and offering here at Roseville Lutheran is a time in our worship where we give thanks and praise to God for the resources, the gifts, the opportunities that God has entrusted to each of us. If you have a reoccurring gift, there are cards in your pew for you to take and place in the offering basket as it goes by you, as a reminder of your gifts that you have already given today. If you'd like to give online, you can scan the QR code in your bulletin or use the text to give feature. If you're joining us online today for worship, then we ask that you visit our website to make a gift today as well. There are also connection cards uh, in your pews in front of you. Please fill those out and place them in the basket. If you are new to our community, you're visiting here maybe for the first time, you'd simply like to help out at Roseville Lutheran, or you're in need of prayer. Take time again to fill out those connection cards. Children, you're invited to come forward during our offering. Put your offerings in this basket right next to me as well. Again, thank you for all the ways that you show up and support Roseville Lutheran Church, allowing yourself and all of us to grow and deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. This year, we have 15 young people who have been instructed in the Christian faith. They have grown to know God through their church community and acts of service, and now desire publicly to affirm their baptism and their faith. The individuals affirming their baptism this morning will stand as I say their name. And they are Benjamin David Barnes. 
Chase Browning, Ariana Calza Diaz, Amos Hansen, Jack Jacobson, Ben Kalhoff, Ian Robert McCann, Madeline Mickley, Griffin Michael Murphy, Justin Lawrence Roth, Maxwell Robert Schaffhausen, Priya Storley, Benjamin Von Delindy, Nick Westby, and Hugh Alvin Lewis Zuponsic. Siblings in Christ, even before you were born and baptized, God delighted in you and called you beloved. You were claimed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, whether you knew it or not, whether you liked it or not. And the Holy Spirit was equipping you with the unique gifts and talents that you have to share as a partner in God's creative work. Baptismal promises were spoken to you, for you, and together with your name. Your family, sponsors, the congregation gathered around you in the midst of community and worship to declare God's love and salvation for you. This is where seeds of faith were planted in your story. We give thanks for those who pray for you and nourish your spirit. They are signs of God's promises at work in your life. We are invited as witnesses as you affirm your baptismal promises today. We celebrate your participation in Christian community, worship, service, prayer, and study for the sake of your sacred calling. We believe that today is a new beginning and not an ending one where we can affirm our faith as belief that is still becoming, with wonder, doubts, and always more to learn. We get to explore who we are and what we believe in community in the body of Christ. We know that our baptismal promises will move and adapt with us throughout life, but that nothing we do can break us from God's love and promises. Together with your siblings in Christ, you wish to profess your faith in God and reject sin. We make these bold statements not because we are absolutely certain about these things, but because we are always becoming faithful to them and learning to wrestle with these claims about our relationship with God. We join our voices with yours to remind you that we are all in this together. When you were baptized, we stood with you to speak God's truth about power, value, and love. We promised to reject the voices that would challenge your, your first and forever identity as a beloved child of God. And now we invite you, the congregation, to stand with us in defiance of the forces of sin and evil, trusting that the same spirit who had the power to raise Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in you. And so, people of God, do you reject the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that pull us away from God? If so, say, we do. We, we do. do. Do you promise to continue supporting these children of God, affirming them through all circumstances with their first and forever name, Beloved? Do you promise to hold healthy and safe space for them to keep growing in their faith so they learn to trust there is nothing they can do to make God love them any more or any less than they are already loved in Jesus? If so, say it, we do. We, we do. do. So I ask you now, this year's confirmands, to confess your faith, and we invite all of the gathered people of God to join in confessing our common faith together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge, judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life, life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to pray daily, to hear God's word and share the supper, to learn prayers, creeds, and commandments, to open holy scriptures, to be nurtured by the faith and prayers of others so that you learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. People of God, do you promise to support these siblings and pray for them in their life in Christ? We, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. At this time, I invite you all to be seated, and we will invite parents and sponsors and confirmation leaders to come on up when your child comes forward to lay your hands on and for them to receive this blessing. We'll go alphabetically in groups of five so you can anticipate when to get up and when to come forward. And we'll do so at this time. Rejoice the 
Please stand and let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these people your own. 
You forgave them all their sins and brought them to the newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them daily your gifts of grace and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins in front of God and one another. Gracious God, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and free us from our sin. Send your Holy Spirit to empower us to live for you alone. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at this table where Jesus is host and meal. Please be seated.
Please stand in body or spirit. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Spirit is ever present in our lives, letting the Word wash over, placing Jesus in our midst. May we go forth praising God sharing the good news, and living out Christ's love. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let's go. 